So today's video, I'm just gonna be talking to you about the difference between a CPU air cooler and an AIO cooler. Um, so which one should I buy? Well, it all dep <laughs> it's quite a hard question, but it's quite simple as well at the same time, because technically CPUs have got different silicones in them. So some run really hot, which is not very good. The CPUs that run really cool are the like CPU silicone lottery winners. Those CPUs cost the same amount as what the other ones do that are identically the same, but they just literally produce more heat. And because they produce more heat means you have to spend more money to keep it cooled. But technically you won't know that unless you've got another CPU cooler or AIO cooler to cool it down. And different AIO coolers are different. So let me break it down for you. So if you buy a cheaper computer, so the CPU running probably the Core i5, Core i3, then you can opt for a CPU air cooler. You could opt for an AIO cooler, but that's called an overkill, meaning that it is an overkill because it's more money and it's cooling it and it's not even producing the heat off the CPU. Now, if you're going for something like a Core i7 or Core i9 or AMD 2600X or 2700 or 2700X, you need optimized cooling, which means that you need an AIO cooler or a beefy CPU air cooler that's going to make sure that it actually cools down the silicone inside the CPU, keep the chip nice and cool, so, and also can dissipate heat as well, which would be the CPU air cooler, which we'll talk more about in a minute. So, Having a CPU cooler, AIO cooler, is down to preferences and down to your own budget. And also how much performance that you want to gain for your CPU. If you want to optimize CPU, then you'll go with obviously an AIO cooler. An AIO cooler can go up from, actually, let's talk about custom water cooling as well. So the difference is you've got radiators that come in sizes uh, with the fan. So 120, 240, 280, 360, 480, 420, I think I went backwards then, 520 and the 580, that's the, that's the sizes you can get in the radiator. So that means that the price will go up because then it means you have to get a bigger case. And if you're gonna be spending money on like a 420 and a 480 or a 520 like radiator, then obviously your budget's no ends. So you've got a limited budget or unlimited budget that you're gonna go with a massive case that's gonna probably be about 500 quid upwards, maybe like a thousand pound upwards, but let's say 500 pound upwards, then you're gonna be looking at a CPU that needs, to obviously, it's gonna generate a lot of heat and you're gonna to need to dissipate that from having a nice custom water-cooled computer. Now the difference is, you start off with a Core i3 and a Core i5 or an AMD, um, like, uh, what one, 2200, or 2400G or something like that. CPU only needs to be cooled with like a little light a like an air cooler. So that means that you can go into the price range of like three, all the way up to probably about 70 pound. Now AIO cooler starts from 120 all the way up to 560 or 580. I can't remember how big it can go really freaking big in a radiator. And that means that the fans are a bit expensive. Now if you chuck in the high performance fans then it's going to work out more money especially the high performance static uh, radiator fans but then that means that you would need well if you were into rgb then rgb fans would be really expensive like the thermal tape fans could be like over 100 quid for like three fans and they're only 120 not even 140 but there's so many different customizations you can go with so the difference between a cpu air cooler and an aio cooler and custom water cooling custom water cooling is unlimited budget so you can go with anything you want and you can make it look nice, aesthetically pleasing, low down, have lower temps because you're using better coolant fluid and you're using a big copper base, copper base? Copper base CPU um, water block and you can water cool the graphics cards, the MOSFETs and you can also water cool the, the uh, chipset as well and the RAM if you want to but you don't need to water cool the RAM. And then with a custom, a, with a normal AIO or a custom AIO cooler, you can walk all the graphics cards and you can walk all the chi uh, chipset and the MOSFETs, but it's all in one sort of loop and you do get a reservoir and a pump and everything that's all included, but it's not as much custom as having custom fittings or custom barbs or custom compression fittings, stuff like that. And then you can like do aesthetically um clean loops into the like the case and all that sort of stuff but the the thing is with that you gotta have a lot of experience you can use glass 
or you can use acrylic or you can use PETG. Um, so there's a difference of like how much like you can bend and how quick you can bend and get the clean bends and stuff like that. And yeah, it's a lot of things that go into that. But then if we talk about an AIO custom cording loop, it's kind of like they do it for EK and I think they do it for, I can't remember the other company. I only done it the other day. Uh, uh, a, um, was it Alpha Cool? They do it. And I think even Premature will do it. But anyway, so you've got that custom loop. So you've got CPA cooler, AIO cooler, custom AIO coolers, and then you've got custom cooling. And then you also got all cooling as well, where you can put it in the fish tank. We weren't gonna go into that because it's too much. So just for people, the ordinary people that are gonna dibble and dabble into things, probably get into water cooling and custom water cooling. It's not too bad. So AIO cooling is just something that's really quick. You've got a pump, reservoir, combo, tubing, and all the compression fittings, and then the cables for uh, either DC or PWM that are connected pretty easily into the side of the system. But the difference is, is that you can only cool to a certain level because it's gonna be um, Azatec um, stuff, which is, means it's painted against the, cust the, the people that already like painted it. So it means that you can't really change it. And if you change it, then you're breaking the law with, or like to, things going on and all that anyway that's a little bit like out of the woods but some people are doing un as tech stuff and that means that you can still call down the system but it's a little bit different in different ways it's really really confusing but anyway let's talk about just calling so cpu air cooler you can go from free all the way to like about 80 pound and the coolers get bigger and bigger the difference is is that you gotta have to choose whether you want to have noise no noise, you've got a budget or unlimited budget, and there's so many different things with different people. So if I got a Core i3 or Core i5, I can look at a CPA cooler, and it will be whizzing around. If you're not worried about noise, then it doesn't matter about how much you're gonna spend. But I would choose a Notra, Be Quiet, or even Call the Master, um, or a Cryo Rig, or where's that other company? Um, I can't remember the other one. I normally used to use them as well. Uh, they're really good, but I'll leave a link in the description down below for all of these like links as well. Um, and then you've got the AIO callers. So you've got Corsair. You've got, you've got loads actually. You've got Be Quiet. You've got Thermal Take. You've got Cooler Master. You've got uh, Antec. Um, what else have you got? I'll tell you what, you've got millions of them, but I can't go for them all. But some of them come with obviously the cables that are connected together. But it's all about like how thin the fan is. Can you get it in your case? Have you got a big case that you can have a thicker fan so you can um, have uh, fans up? That... Well, that's another thing. You got when you've got a big radiator, you're going to need bigger fans to obviously push air through it to dissipate it. So it's very complicated. So let's just make this not complicated. What is a good fan or CPU air cooler or AIO cooler for what I, my needs are? So if you're going with Core i3, Core i5, CPU air cooler and AIO, um, AIO cooling, if you've got a decent graphics card and you can dibble and dabble, you can go into the AIO custom region. And then after that, if you want to get really custom, then you can go with flexible tubing or hard tubing and then obviously connect it all up and stuff like that. Watch a few tutorials on how to do that. I've got a few tutorials on my, um, on my actual channel itself. But Core i3, Core i5, forget custom water cooling and forget really AIO cooling. And um, technically as well, AIO cooling, the differences between that as well is that a CPA cooler will last and last and last and not really burn out or anything like that. The only thing that could go wrong is the cable or motherboard killing off the CPA cooler with the cable so you don't get any power to the fan to keep going. But technically you could change the fan if you can find where you can get a fan for second parts or whatever. And also an AIO normally only lasts up to two years. And then after that, you're like, should really change the thermal compound underneath the CPU and change the AIO anyway because the AIO fans will be all right, but it's the radiator, uh, not the radiator, it's the pump and um, everything that's in there because it's only tiny and it's only got a little bit of coolant that goes in through the radiator and the pump and all that sort of stuff. And after a while, it kind of does not do its performance on the job. So if you've got an overclocked CPU uh, and you're using an AIO, 
technically, if you're using a 360, that's, that's susceptible. And then obviously the AIO custom loop and then obviously custom loop with flexible and hard tubing. That's the difference. So if you've got a Quire 3, Quire 5, 2200 and 2200G AMD, the low end CPUs, CPU air cooler from three all the way to about 80 pound. And you could technically use an AIO that is like a 120. And then after that, you're going from Core i5 to Core i7, you start to look in AIOs, custom AIOs, and from Core i7 to Core i9, and obviously AMD's top of the line CPUs like um, Fred Ripper and stuff like that, and obviously their top of the range Ryzen 2700X and stuff like that. Then you start looking at custom AIOs and custom, um, custom water cooling as well so flexible tubing and obviously hard tubing as well and that's where you can start messing around with the aesthetics and stuff but if you want more information on it because it gets a little bit more difficult because you've got rgb fans and if you're paying the same price for performance fans you might as well get rgb fans that have got an rgb you can turn it on and off and also like with thermal taking you can use like your phone and then you can um do voice activation and change the colours and stuff like that, but it depends how much money you've got for a budget. But yeah, even like on a Core i7 or Core i9, you could use a CPU air cooler, but what it is is going to ramp up with obviously sound. You can customise it in the BIOS, but for people that don't know how to get into the BIOS, but know how to just put a computer together before they go into the BIOS, that is a good like step to take. Those are good steps to take. Anyway, subscribe, share, like, and follow me on all social media platforms, and I hope this was in-depth enough. If it was, comment down below, and tell me if you want to see any other videos or like what you want to know more information about. And well, we'll get on and do it. Anyway, subscribe, share, follow me on all social media platforms. See you next one. Thanks for watching. Roger and out.